Well, welcome to our thought for today, Tuesday the 15th of September. Uh, my name is Graham Poslett. We come today to the penultimate, the last but one psalm in the book of Psalms, Psalm 149, beginning and ending uh, with the Hebrew word hallelujah, meaning praise the Lord. It's another of the hallelujah psalms. And in Psalm 149, we read what it is that enables praise, our hallelujah, and what our purpose is as those who hallelujah him in the world. Uh, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the saints, in the newer version of the NIV, let his faithful people Rejoice in this honour and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. I mean, Psalm 149, what is it that enables our hallelujah-ing, that enables praise? Well, in verse 2, and repeated to a certain extent in verse 5, let Israel rejoice in their maker, let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let, let, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Perhaps that's where we should start today, where we should always start with the simple recognition that we each have a maker. None of us are accidents. How we turn out isn't a matter of chance. This is the key to praising the Lord. In Philippians 4 verse 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. If God is the joy of my heart, if he is the one I delight in and long for. Then praise is the most natural thing in the world for me, I mean, even when nothing is going right. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. And I love verse 4. For the Lord takes delight in his people. Isn't that a lovely verse? We are to rejoice, take delight in him, because he rejoices and takes delight in us. Whilst I and presume, presumably you too don't always get everything right, the Lord doesn't look down on me and you with a scowl on his face, but a happy smile. Verse 4 goes on, For the Lord takes delight in his people, he crowns the humble with salvation. I don't know about you, but I've never been to an investiture. When the Queen, or in her absence, Prince Charles has knighted anyone or awarded anyone an OBE, MBE, CBE, Order of the Garter, or Order of any other kind of underwear. Uh, maybe you have. I have known one or two people who have received MBEs and OBEs, but I've never been to such a ceremony. But those knighted kneel before the Queen. And that's not because she's so short that if they didn't kneel, she wouldn't be able to rest her sword on each of their shoulders. It's a sign of humility and submission, her knights of the realm bending the knee to her. Well, I say I've never been to an investiture. Actually, I have. And quite probably, so too have you. Only an investiture on a far, um, a far greater scale. My own, our own, not before Her Majesty, but before His. We have each of us been crowned, 
with salvation if we have bowed the knee, humbled ourselves before him, asked Jesus into our lives. The Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. And then um, verse 5 says, Let the saints, in the newer version of the NIV, let his faithful people rejoice in this honour. What honour? Well, the honour of being delighted in by the Lord and of being crowned with salvation by him. Let the saints rejoice in this honour. What greater honour can there be? And Psalm 149 goes on, May the praise of God be in their mouths, a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. What is the glory of all his faithful people, to carry out the sentence that God has written against others. But what is God's vengeance on the peoples now? What is the sentence he has written against them? Well, not a sentence of judgment now, but a sentence of grace, of hope. Not their defeat, their binding, fettering, shackling, but in Jesus, their conversion, restoration and freedom. Them coming to know the glorious freedom of the people of God. What is the, um, what is the glory of all his faithful people? But bringing others of every tribe, tri uh, tongue, tribe and nation to confess Jesus as Lord. Now, what is the secret? What is the invitation of Psalm 149 to a praise-filled mouth and an effective Christian life and witness? Well, it's found in verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Now, maybe life isn't all you would want it to be at the moment. Maybe you aren't all you would choose to be. Maybe it is the case that you and I still have um, a long way to go yet. But that doesn't mean that you and I don't have a maker. That doesn't mean that you and I can't take delight in him. And that doesn't mean that he doesn't take delight in us. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the saints rejoice in this honour and sing for joy on their beds. Amen. <laughs>